you know, if you read uh, the New Testament, for whatever reason you read it, you, you know, um, it's hard not to read the letter of James uh, in contrast to the letters of Paul. You know, if, if that's your thing, I mean, if you're into reading the New Testament, James, Paul, Peter, but especially Paul, it's an incredibly prominent part, the letters of Paul in the New Testament, but reading James, a single letter of James, uh, you know, uh, these are early Christians and they're, you know, they're, they're, they're writing as a means of instruction. That's certainly why Paul wrote. You can imagine, you know, early history of Christianity immediately after the death of, uh, of Jesus, you've, you've got these little communities, you know, starting of course in Jerusalem, starting in Palestine, starting in the Eastern Mediterranean, and then gradually sort of growing and popping up in different areas of Greece and Rome and North Africa. These little communities of people who, I don't even know if they call themselves Christians, you know, the followers of, of, of Jesus Christ, people who believe that he was the Messiah in one way or another. And you have people like Paul and James really instructing them because they're brand new instructing them about all sorts of things in, in ethics and um, case of Paul, you know, sort of giving a certain interpretation of the importance of Jesus and who he was and what he represented, his significance, you know. So uh, the letter of James, I think, is like sort of Paul. He, he's giving these early Christians a certain amount of instruction, but quite interesting to see the different sort of different sort of emphasis and instruction that they give. And it's hard not to think of Romans and that passage of Romans, which I gave you, you know, um, where Paul is talking about sin and how there are two laws within him. And then to read James is pretty, pretty interesting. Uh, James, uh, verse eight here, a, a double-minded man is unstable in all his ways. Uh, I don't have any reason to think that he had Paul in mind when he said that, but it's, it's impossible after having just read Romans, which is you know, so much of the drama of the divided self. Um, and then to see somebody talk about a double-minded man, it just seems to apply to Paul. Now, whether it does or not, I don't know, but that's, that's what pops into my mind when I look at the letter of James after having looked at the letter of Paul. Um, there are very famous parts of this that may or may not be the best parts of it. Uh, but again, in a brief video, I won't go through the whole thing. I'll just point out. And, and that's this relationship between faith and works. If, if you're into Christianity or if you're interested in it for any reason, either as a personal faith or just because you're philosophically or historically interested in, in Christianity, this uh, opposition or this contrast or this distinction, I should say, between faith and works uh, is pretty important in the history of Christianity. You know, what, what's more important, to live an ethical life or to have faith? Every Christian writer would say they're both incredibly important, but you know which is which is more important. Um, what doth it profit, my brethren, though a man say he hath faith and have not works? Can faith save him? Uh, and then, famously, a little bit below that, faith. Even so, faith, if it hath not works, is dead. And then that's uh, you know really credible thing that he says and and. Uh, I don't know if Paul is thinking in a completely different way or not, but Paul does come out, I think, in Romans and say, you know, you, you are saved, whatever salvation means, by faith alone. Which, you know, not to say that works, deeds, how you live is not important. But. So there's really incredible diversity in early Christianity, and this is just the tip of the iceberg, but the sort of philosophical, uh, ethical, and perhaps even theological di diversity or 
contrast between just these two uh, important Christian documents, which is really interesting.